Hi. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 4 of Your Art Dude Talks Art. Today, I want to talk about my earliest influences. All of my podcasts are intentionally short because I get bored listening to hour-long podcasts. I apologize in advance for reading a script and not sounding like I'm having a conversation with you, but if I don't follow a written script, I end up saying, uh, way too much. The script for each episode is published on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash yourartdude, prior to each broadcast release. Um, patrons get an early access to the script. And then it's published on my Medium page, yourartdude.medium.com, following the broadcast on Friday. I hope you will follow me and support me on my Patreon page. See all my links at the end. I'll talk more in depth after this short break. Welcome back. Just a quick note about my social media pages. My Instagram account was hacked recently. So if you get a message because you were following me on my old page, ignore it and block them. Uh, my new Instagram page is instagram.com slash official underscore your art dude. Okay, I'm gonna jump right in. Some of my earliest memories of influences are bands who were popular at the time. I was born, and as a side note, I am old. I was born in 1960, um, so therefore that qualifies me as a senior citizen. This was a dramatic time to be alive, <clears throat> as the baby boomers, born during and shortly after World War II, were becoming young adults and were rebelling against the cultural and political structures of the time. John F. Kennedy was president of the United States and was assassinated in 1963 when I was only three years old. Eight months later, the Beatles released their first film, A Hard Day's Night, in the summer of 1964, a month before my fourth birthday. I watched the film a few years later on television and was immediately captivated by their music. Little did I realize at the time that the Beatles had released their White Album by the time I was enjoying their earlier sessions, so I was a little behind the curve due to my young age. The Beatles still have a strong influence on me and did so during these formative years. Around the same time, I was introduced to a new television show about a band who was struggling to become discovered and break into the music business. The television show and the band were the Monkees. Much can be discussed about how this band was created and put together, but the members consisted of two musicians and two actors who became musicians and history bears out that the Monkees were a real band who had a significant influence on the music and culture of that time, which resonates to today. The Monkees had a huge influence on me during my preteen years. I still grow nostalgic when I hear the music of the Beatles and the Monkees because my memories of my youth are of an innocent time when life was simpler and slower. Kind of like a Buddhist-styled memory. I still like to watch the television shows on YouTube, as well as the films by both groups and the documentaries about the monkeys, which aired on VH1. While I greatly admire these artists for their art, I am saddened, and to be honest, I get a little misty when I think about how many of the members of these two groups are no longer living because it helps me to realize that I too have a limited amount of time in this life. It was during this time when I was eight years old that I began spending a great deal of time contemplating dogma and trying to figure out what the purpose of my life was about and why I was here. I know a lot of eight-year-olds don't spend time thinking about these things. They're thinking about baseball, Barbie dolls, and riding bikes, but my time was spent trying to figure it out. When I was giving this matter some lengthy thought, I spent that time alone in isolation, simply walking around in nature where I could be alone with my thoughts. 
Anytime I see old photos of people from the past 150 years, I wonder about those people. I'm talking about people who weren't famous. Photos which candidly captured a moment of their life. I am curious who they are and what their lives were like and what happened following that photo of them at that moment. If the photo isn't very old, I wonder if they are living. I wonder if their families and friends remember them very often and if they have fond memories of the times they shared. When I was eight years old, I wanted to be remembered after I was no longer living. And I wanted to leave a Glenn was here stamp in time. I ultimately decided to devote my energy to creating art and sharing my art with others. I never sought approval or popularity from my art because I never considered my work being liked by others as important. It only matters if my audience feels something when they see my work. They may like it or they may hate it, but they feel anything, then I have succeeded and my art is successful. I sometimes now wonder if any of my artwork will survive long into the future, and I am curious about the impact my work will have in the future. Please follow me online, and I appreciate your support wherever and however you show your support on Patreon, patreon.com slash your art dude, or through this podcast or this video podcast that I post on YouTube and Vimeo, or on Medium when you if you read the script on yourartdude.medium.com. But remember to check out my art store. It's store.yourartdude.com. I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and on Amazon, you can buy some of my early poems, which are available now in hardback. To all my art dudes and art dudettes, peace and love.